principally for the, the families whose children will be making their first Holy Communion at the beginning of October. There are three extra Masses to get everybody in that weekend and you've already signed up for your chosen time. St Blaine's two Masses on the Saturday and St Mary's at two o'clock on the Sunday, Sunday the 4th. So the first thing is, I need you to get this sheet back. Um, these went out with the children on Friday in an envelope for each child and on it you're invited to put your child's name and then the three people who will be coming with you were restricted to three guests each. Now guests doesn't mean guests in that sense. You can only have four people in the bench with you. One is the child making the first communion and three others. So I need those names for track and trace and also a telephone number. Because of the circumstances and we can't have the church full as it ordinarily would be, we're offering the opportunity of it being live streamed, a bit like I'm doing right now, so that people at home or elsewhere can watch in on the day or can watch the video later on. In current circumstances, I can't do that without your explicit permission. So there is a box on this letter asking you to tick if you are happy that we live stream when your child is here. If any parent doesn't tick that box, we won't live stream. Now, please notice a really important instruction. Um, the, the decision to go ahead with the First Communions was mine, not the school. And the celebration of the sacrament happens in the parish, not the school. It's here that we invite you to come and be part of the parish. In these circumstances, of course, lots of you haven't come or been able to take part. So what I need you to do is make sure that this letter does not go to school for reasons of uh, infection control and also to highlight that it's a parish that your child belongs to. So I need these forms to come back to the chapel house. Put it back in the envelope when you filled it out and make sure and get it through the, the door of the chapel house. There are a few other indications on the letter of other things that must happen. One thing is that we need to ask you to make sure that your family and your friends don't come to the car park. We're also obliged for uh, hygiene measures and social distancing measures in the church grounds and car park, not just in the church itself. So I really need to ask you not to, to have folks all coming here to see you coming in with your child. I know it sounds quite strict, but we really need to be super careful. Okay, so once you come in, I'd be really grateful if you would get here no later than 20 minutes before the particular mass that you've signed up for. If it happens to be raining, wait in your car and we'll bring you in car by car. Once you come in, parish stewards will check off the track and trace list. Then you'll be asked to leave your child in the porch with the parish catechists. And then you're invited to come into the church and find your designated bench. It'll have your child's name on the end of the bench nearest the central aisle. When the Mass begins, I'll lead the children in, bring them up here onto the altar area. I'll invite them, they'll be socially distanced, the stewards and the parish catechists will help with that. I'm going to ask them to drop their mask and I'll introduce each child to the rest of the guests. That's as much for the live streaming as anything else, so that people might be here looking at your child, but we want all of them to be kept in the prayer of the Mass. Once I've introduced them, they'll come back to you and stay in the bench. The schools and the school staffs are not able to attend because of the lockdown restrictions. But what I have asked is that a representative from each school will come and do the reading, read out the, the Word of God at each First Communion. And that's to make sure that it's done safely and also that the schools are represented. So the two head teachers will read at Mass and so will one of the senior teachers at one of the other Masses, so that the schools, St Mary's and St Blaine's, are represented. I, I'd like then that the Mass will be as simple as possible. Unfortunately, we can't have the children doing prayers or bringing up the offertory as we've done in the past. But when it comes to Holy Communion, again with the help of the parish catechists, you will be invited to come forward in a wee family group or with whoever is with you, with the child, and with the three guests who are behind that child. When you come up for Holy Communion, and again, the catechists will remind the children of this from the pulpit as you're coming forward, 
that they can take their mask down, although they're receiving Holy Communion in the hand, and then consume Holy Communion, and then you'll go back to your seat. Only when you've gone back to your seat will the next family be invited to come forward. At the very end of the celebration, the children, again as they did at the beginning, will be invited to come up, socially distanced on the altar, so that we can congratulate them, give them a wee round of applause. And at that point also, we're going to invite a, a kind of group picture. So although they'll be kind of a wee bit spaced out, we can get a picture of them all together on the altar. And then when that's done, they'll come back to you in your seats. The stewards in the parish will help you to leave because you need to leave by the side doors that are nearest to you because there's a one-way system in the church. I need to stress that we'll try and get that group photograph at the very end with the kids together, but we cannot ask, or we need to ask rather, that you don't have groups or family group photographs out in the car park. And what I mean by that, just to be clear, that different families shouldn't all get together for bunched up group photographs. Family groups need to keep separate. You might be able to do a long arm selfie or something like that, but we need to caution everybody to be careful with hygiene outside. I'm really sorry, I genuinely would have liked this to have been a more normal celebration for your child. I, I made the decision to go with it now rather than wait for a whole year to delay them growing and becoming a bit more restless, that we would try and have the First Holy Communion before the October break. We have other sacraments that we need to negotiate with Primary 4 and with Primary 7 and indeed with S1, who should have been confirmed earlier. But don't you need to worry about any of that. The main thing is that you know roughly what's going to happen at your child's First Communion. Now, I'm making this wee video on Saturday, on September the 19th. We know and we anticipate that there's going to be announcements from the First Minister at the beginning of next week. I'm planning to take a couple of days off next week, but I will monitor closely what those new restrictions might mean for the church. To be honest, I don't expect that there's going to be any change in public worship because there have been, as yet touch wood, no reported cases coming from or traced back to a church context. So we've been very safe. We've been keeping to all the procedures. I hope and expect that you can help that to continue happening. And hopefully there'll be no announcement next week that in any way should change the arrangements that we've made for your child's first communion, at least here in the church. What you do afterwards, I'm afraid, is really up to yourselves. So please God, things will be fine. We'll make it as memorable as possible. And the main thing to focus on is that the children are receiving the Blessed Sacrament, they're receiving the Eucharist, the absolute center of our Catholic faith. And nothing really will be allowed to detract from that. If you have got any questions, find me a wee email and I'll get back to you. Thanks very much.